I have hesitated to write about this for a few reasons. One, it won't be a long story, so I'll break it up into two parts. Two, it becomes intensely personal. Three, well, you never know how things will be received. The part of Central Texas where all these encounters take place is close to the Devil's Backbone. It's not called the Devil's Backbone for paranormal reasons, but because the area is very rugged and remote. It's made up of limestone cliffs and caverns, oak trees and jumper, and rattlesnakes and bobcats. That being said, it also does have a strong reputation for unexpected happen. The land where these occurrences take place belonged to my long-term boyfriend. He had several acres that were attached to a few hundred that belonged primarily to his father. The property has been in the family since before the Civil War, so several generations had been born and lived and died on it. When Steve first took me out there, we hadn't been dating long, but he wanted me to see the area. His plan was to eventually build a house on it, but at the same time, there were no structures. It had great big live oaks and wild red bud trees. Those red buds come to life in the spring when they bloomed. The property also had thickets of dew berries and a row of elm trees along the southern boundary. Along the western boundary was an old rock wall that I used to find Texas rat snakes sunning themselves on. One year, we had a pair of red wing hawks nest in the back section and successfully raise a chick. They came back for a repeat the next year, but I'm getting ahead of myself. On that first visit, there was a large wooden swing hanging on a live oak in what would become the backyard. It was the type of swing you would often find on a porch, big enough for two or three people. There was a tall round table in front of it and an empty beer bottle sitting on the table. I asked Steve about it and he told me it was for his grandfather. I knew his grandfather was dead, so he explained that he put the swing up then and then had surprisingly seen him sitting on it many times. The acres my boyfriend owned and once belonged to his grandfather, and when Steve was young, they spent a lot of time there together. That is why my boyfriend bought it. It had been a special place for the two of them. So I waited to see the grandfather on the swing. As time went on, Steve built a shed with a loft that he could use for storage and shelter if he got caught out in bad weather. One day, he and his friend Jim rode out there, and as they neared the live oak tree, Jim asked who the man on the swing was. Steve told him it was his grandfather. Jim looked back to the swing, and the old man was gone. Jim initially was so frightened, he didn't even want to get out of the truck, but eventually did. I wasn't with them that trip, so again, I waited to see the grandfather on the swing. We made frequent trips out to the country, and I was always hopeful I would see his grandfather, but it didn't come to pass. Sometimes Steve would see him, but always when I wasn't there. I finally started to accept the fact that, for some reason, the grandfather didn't seem to want to appear to me. I didn't know if that was a good or bad thing, but that was the way it was. As time passed, Steve moved in with me in Austin. One evening, I drove out to the country to pick him up at his sister's, and he wanted to stop by his property to check on everything. It had been raining for days, and he had me stop my car on top of the little hill at the start of his land and aim my headlights down to his shed so he could see where he was walking. It was way too muddy for me to drive down the hill and not get stuck. I watched him trudge off down the slope, and I got my dog out of the car to give him a break. My dog and I were messing around by a castle guard when something caught my eye. I glanced up and saw Steve walking a few feet away from me towards my car, so I turned back to call my dog. I was a bit puzzled, though, because Steve was coming from the wrong direction. He was coming from the west when he should have been coming from the north. I turned back again, but he was nowhere to be seen. He had just disappeared. And I was so confused. I had no idea what was going on at the moment. I suddenly realized the person I saw was wearing a dark shirt with dark pants. Steve was wearing a maroon shirt with faded jeans. I stood in the moonlight for a moment then, with my dog, searched the whole area. Nothing. Nowhere. Nothing. At all. Nada. 
no footprints, and no person. Cash and I were quite alone. I loaded my dog up and sat in my car, waiting for my boyfriend while coming to the realization that I had finally seen the grandfather. Not on the swing, but I had seen him nonetheless. Sorry for the long post, but this was just the beginning of strange happenings on the land near the Devil's Backbone. Devil's Backbone Apparitions I guess I should start my story by stating that I am a full practicing witch, so that you can understand the many ghost encounters I have had over my lifetime were pretty common. But on this one occasion, while I was visiting my favorite camping area at Canyon Lake Park near the Devil's Backbone area, I had an encounter of so many ghosts and apparitions, it was a bit overwhelming for me to experience. Hearing cavalry horses and encounters with Native American apparitions as well, my encounter was a very unique one that I haven't heard of before on the region, so I'm wondering if other people had the same experience I had on that fateful March night back in 2008. I don't remember the exact date, but it was sometime near early March when I decided to go to the park and take a break from witchcraft to try to be a normal human for at least a day. <laughs> I chose that fateful weekend because there was a threat of severe weather, so I knew there would hardly be anyone at the park. As I registered with the park ranger, the lady was kind and said there were only four other guests brave enough or crazy enough to be in this a thousand plus acre park and to be careful while I was here. I really enjoyed the day being out on the lake with my kayak and rode across the lake to grab a bite to eat at the local restaurant that was part of the marina area of the lake. Even though there were threats of severe weather, it was only lightly rained off and on throughout the day, so I stayed relatively dry, although maybe a little waterlogged at times from the rain and swimming I did throughout the day. It was so nice to take a break from my 24-hour witchcraft, and I was secretly wondering if maybe I should just try to live like a normal human being from now on, to focus on the living and not the supernatural aspects of my life. I felt like I was battle-worn from the life I was living, and this vacation was something I really needed in my life to get some type of normalcy to it, if just for a day. Well, as night fell on the region, I placed my boat back on land, swam a little more, and decided around midnight to head up to Park Area 5 since it was the highest area of the park and had beautiful views of the stars to see while I watched a movie from my battery-operated portable DVD player. By then the rain stopped and it was becoming partly cloudy, so I thought it would be a good idea to see a movie under the stars and enjoy the night I hoped would never end. As I was heading to the highest part of the park, I noticed that there were deer feeding at night and they became a very skittish as I passed them by to the lone park table I was going to sit on to watch my movie. What made me feel uncomfortable about the deer was that they did not seem to be afraid of me, but of something that was approaching our area and then they came. I was determined to be a happy camper that night and not a witch, so I purposely ignored all the warning signs of an approaching supernatural experience that was about to unfold around me. So I kept thinking to myself, not tonight. I am going to watch my movie. As I was heading to the lone stone table that I was going to view my movie at, I kept having visions of that stupid Blair Witch movie and kind of regretted I was making fun of evil earlier in the day. I can be a little arrogant towards the supernatural, but that is probably caused by the many years of experience I had with it, so my apologies. At any rate, I climbed on the table and started watching the movie I bought with me, titled Lady in the Water, which seemed appropriate since I was in the water the whole day earlier. Well. As I was sitting on the sacrificial table, yes, I know it was only a stone park table, but I kept having visions of it being a sacrificial table for some reason. But I saw ghostly apparitions out of the corner of my eye as I was watching my movie. At first, it was just a few entities, but then hundreds came and walked past me as I was attempting to see my movie. Well, 
Needless to say, these apparitions had my full attention by now, and I was trying to understand why they were gathering in my area for. None of these ghostly entities seemed to have ever been human, but had human form, even though I couldn't see their faces, because they were all wearing medieval-looking masks to hide their identity. These masks were very European-looking and had a very Celtic pagan look about them. I thought this was extremely strange because I never heard of European encounters in this region before, so I don't understand why these entities were in this region to begin with. Fortunately for me, as these things passed by, most were either ignoring me or completely oblivious to my presence, and they seemed to be more interested to attend some type of celebration they were about to have, and it didn't seem to care I was in their presence. Except for one entity that had a definite interest in me, and it seemed mischievous, which was unnerving. While all of this was happening, I kept feeling things crawling all over my legs and arms, so I took a chance and turned on my DVD player to convince myself that there were no bugs on me. So I shined the light on my legs and arms and found all types of bugs crawling around me, from silverfish to centipedes, and I understand that I am in a forest, but really? That was enough for me to feel like maybe I wasn't welcome there, and I didn't want to disturb their function, whatever it was. So I quietly and slowly left the area, but one small entity in a medieval jester looking costume kept following me. So I went to my car and locked the door. Fortunately, I didn't set up my tent equipment because of the wet ground, so I could leave the area anytime I wanted, but decided to try and get some sleep until morning came to go back home. As I was sleeping in my car, I kept seeing that small entity jumping up outside my car and playing peekaboo with me by peeking and hiding from my window throughout the night. Well, after about an hour of this game, I had enough and decided to just drive to my home, which was over 70 miles away, to end this strange night. But that thing somehow followed me to my home and stayed there with me until dawn came. I still, to this day, do not know why this happened, and I am so angry at myself by not staying there to find out why those things were there. I was just battle-worn and wanted to live a normal weekend for just once and stay away from the supernatural world. When this happened to me, I still don't know what these things were celebrating because it was too soon for an Ostara celebration. Perhaps these entities do not celebrate human holidays, but have their own time clock for their own celebration? I have the feeling I will never know. Well, that is my story and I'm glad I survived it. I just wish I had more information on why those things were there. Sometime in the future, I will return back to the area as a witch to fully investigate the scene of the crime and hopefully find out once and for all why those things were there in the first place.